Good afternoon. Um, I had uh, a question in the comments from Yvonne um, regarding my steps, the steps of my painting, and I refer often to my step six as the finishing touches to a painting. And she's very, uh, very good at pointing this out. Her question was, if step one is putting your charcoal, you know, roughing in a charcoal sketch, and step six is your final touches, what are steps two through five? Uh, I should probably say to start with that even if I do a painting in three steps, I will always call the final touches, just those final highlights on a painting, I always call them step six for no other reason than, than, than the fact that I'm used to saying that. Um, if I, you know what, here, I did write, I wrote some notes down. Uh, I'll just go through, you know, what you would sort of technically call the six steps that I go through. If I go through them all, typically it'll only be on a larger painting that I do that. So uh, here, let me just get to it. All right, your first step would be a mental step really you know it's identifying and deciding on your subject matter well we all know you know what that means i don't need to explain that might be a still life might be a person you know it, it could be a landscape whatever it is so you do have to decide you have to think about it compose it in your mind to begin with divide the space of your canvas in your mind to begin with so the second step would be in fact composing it on canvas in my case with charcoal you could use a pencil um, I don't like to put too much charcoal on because then you form a, a bit of a barrier between the canvas and the paint itself I like to I prefer to keep most of it most of the lines light and then once I have it in place I will as you've seen flick the canvas and uh, you know that shakes most of the charcoal off if I've gotten too dark in places I'll even take my light like a light uh, cotton or fleece rag and uh, just give it a very light wipe to take off the, the bulk of the charcoal. So that puts everything in place. Then for my third step I thin off paint with turpentine or paint thinner to the consistency pretty much of water, like it's very thin. It's really just a stain at that point. Uh, not a problem to have the white of the canvas showing through. Um, because, okay, actually I shouldn't say that, because in this case my plan is to draw in my lines over my charcoal lines more or less, improving my charcoal sketch. Every step you make you try to improve, try to build on what you've been doing. Um, and in that case, I, I still it's still almost the consistency of water. I usually outline fairly dark and it's like stain but it's a little more opaque okay step four now we go into really thinning off that that paint now it's just a wash just washing in the scene with uh, yeah, uh, heavily diluted oil paint again paint thinner or turpentine ah, mineral spirits works too uh, I've heard of issues sometimes with with mineral spirits being such a clean, such a clean thinner that uh, there have been concerns about not, yeah, about impeding the chemical bond between the oil paint and the canvas uh, because every thinner that you want, like you wouldn't use alcohol because alcohol evaporates completely. You want some kind of a, of a dilutant or a thinner that leaves a residue that, that, that has a bit, of, a bit of chemical that is familiar with the oil paint that you're going to lay, lay over top of it. Uh, you don't want a barrier. You want, you want sort of a... You're prepping your, your, your latex prepped canvas with its initial layer of glue. It's kind of like you're sizing it but with, but with thinned off paint because you're going with very lean faint paint and then as you build with oils as you build on top typically you go lean to fat meaning the thinned off oil paint 
to the regular oil paint and then eventually if this is your part of your process adding say linseed oil or or poppy seed oil or walnut oil or you know various things to make your, your paint even even richer it still is thinning off the paint texturally but you're going fatter and fatter the fat content in your paint keeps increasing as you build your way um, as you build your way out anyway I don't think I've done a video yet where you've seen me use linseed oil. They've pretty much all gone simply from thinned off wash to uh, to just straight paint. Okay, so you've washed it in. Wash in the scene, approximating the colors and values you will use on the actual painting. Uh, I tend to take the values down a notch or two and the chroma down a notch or two of my hues, colors. Because I like to go from a little lower, a little, a little, a little darker to a little lighter. Uh, a little bit dumbed down to a little bit more intense. So, again, you know, doing your wash and covering your whole, your whole painting with the general tones and, and what have you. Um, just kind of try to bear that in mind. But also when you're doing that, try to sort of stay within your lines unless you make changes in your lines as you do it don't forget all of these steps are just guidelines uh, you don't have to stick to everything there's no there's no iron fisted rule here you change things as you go I always do that okay that's step four now you would say step five now that you have all that reference information because you've you know you've brought the paint right up to the point where you could say well now I just have to put paint on it which is true but this is the point at which you've really you have to start to pay attention to avoiding over mixing of your paint you try to make your your colors richer you're not using thinner anymore you're not using turpentine or paint thinner or mineral spirits any of that stuff now you're just using straight paint and you're trying on your palette not to kill it, not to overmix a little pile, but to leave it a little bit raw so that each brush stroke has even a subtle amount of, of variation of, of, of color in it or value. Um, and then you just begin painting, you know, the painting. Uh, usually I, I start with the background, work my way forward. Again, that can change a little bit. Sometimes I get sick of painting one area and uh, then I'll just go to a, diff a different area of the painting if I'm confident that I, that I know exactly what I want to do. Um, just because, yeah, we all kind of like to have, we can always get a little bit bored with something and we want that, that shot of dopamine, that little bit of reward. You know, so I've covered all this area. Okay, now I want to start playing with these because it's just fun. You can do that. That's fine. Okay. No, the reference information on your canvas or panel. Yeah, paint in your painting. Then, step six. Um, if you've successfully composed your painting, if in general you think it's really good and it's turned out well, this is applying to me. I keep saying you, but I mean that in general. I mean, I, I really I apply that to myself. I'll, uh, I'll live with the pain for a few hours. If something jumps out at me that says, you know, I could be a little higher in chroma or a little higher in value, or I could make this shadow darker, or I could make that edge of a flower petal more intense, or uh, you know, various small changes, and at this point you shouldn't need to do much. You should have already arrived, because your painting is, for intents and purposes, done. But now you're hoping to add the sparkle to it. Um, this is a moment that you can really ruin things, or you can really go, wow, you know, you can, you can manage to put a bit of, uh, bit of magic into it. Uh, a bit of a glow. Um, so I reserve that for my step six. I will do what I consider to be more or less my step six while it's down here on the easel. 
very often though I'll consider it finished and, and, and oil paint dulls ever so slightly depending on what you've got on your on your layer behind it with over a few days um, so I'll take it upstairs I'll hang it on my wall and I'll live with it then for a week maybe two weeks and I may or may not end up deciding to put the last of the last touches on it I include that in step six but sometimes I just live with it for a while before I know for sure before I feel very confident oh I really need to put just one slash of light here and you know three shots of color there very 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 small changes and that's my step six as I said you know it doesn't matter how many steps I've used to make a painting I always call that last step step six uh, okay here's an, you know, two more things I guess often like if I paint on plein air and, and uh, what I'll do and often the studio as well with smaller paintings um, I will just paint the entire canvas I'll just stain the entire canvas with very thinned off oil paint all one color and I'll, I'll buy a bunch of canvases and I'll stain a bunch of them just just so that I don't have the smell in the house I just do it one day let things dry air out the studio or my the area where I where I'll where I'll stain them even you know if I can stain them outside I'll do that too that way they're dried off I'm not too worried about the color I, I stay with pretty subdued muted tones uh, I'll often use uh, ultramarine blue and yellow ochre combination some raw umber really often it comes down to what have I got left over on the palette I don't tend to, to go with bright cadmiums as my stain for the canvas I try to keep them down because again um, personally I prefer to 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 work my way up in strength rather than cover really intense colors um, so you know for example uh, say a little uh, an 8 by 10 panel or, or, a, or a 16 by 20 inch canvas or something I'll just have the whole canvas stained uh, one color so I won't wash in the whole canvas I'll just take the charcoal throw in a few broad strokes and and then, and then draw in with a darker wash over those strokes and then just begin painting um, sometimes I will not even use charcoal I'm just very sure of what I'm looking at sure of what I want to do so I will take the brush and I will just start painting right right from the get-go it's it becomes pretty much a wet and wet painting at that point uh, certainly with a knife I've done that as well just taking a stained canvas and I was feeling particularly bold or cocky and you make big mistakes but you can have really fantastic results by just just saying okay today I'm gonna throw caution to the wind this painting is a painting I'm doing for myself so I'll just take the knife and start throwing color on and sometimes they they turn out wonderfully you know I think I've mentioned before that often the, the most the, certainly when it comes to studies uh, the quickest ones are often the best ones uh, the most honest paintings you know in a sense okay I think I answered that question I'm sorry I guess I could have just answered it in the comments Yvonne but uh, I wanted to complicate it and make it more difficult for everybody <laughs> so this painting I'm I'm uh, I'm not going to show you now it's coming closer it keeps getting better I'm very happy with how it's going but it still needs a bit of work and I'll just give you an overview once the painting is complete uh, if you have any questions uh, comments or insults in, uh, put them in the comments section down below Thanks very much for watching and have a fantastic day. See you.